So, so I was eating pasta tonight. I had some linguine, and it occurred to me that, well, it's well known, isn't it, that all the different pastas, even if they're made of the same material, pasta, uh, flour and water, whatever, they uh, all have a different experience in the mouth. Like the linguine felt flat in my mouth. And uh, I know that when you ha eat a strand of ordinary spaghetti, you can suck it through a little hole like that. And it goes in, doesn't it? Because it's got a round feeling. The tongue and the mouth can feel all the different shapes of all the different spaghettis. There's shells, there are different gauges of uh, spaghetti. There's linguine, there's tagliatelle, sorry about my Italian, that's a flat ribbonish one. And um, yes, there's shells with little creases in them. There was one called Osironi too, uh, sold in Australia, which was the shape of Australia, I don't know if they still make it. And there's macaroni of course, with tubes through the middle. The point I'm making is, even if you use the same recipe for the, the same sauce, the same oil, the same water, the same boiling, the same spices, uh, each spaghetti, each pasta, rather, has a different feeling in your mouth and a whole different experience. And then there's one called maidenhair, isn't there? A very fine one, a vermicelli. And there's a fine one called, I'm not maidenhair, is it maidenhair or it's not golden hair, something like that, or angel's hair, something very fine. And yeah, that's a very fine one. And uh, there's where you can get alphabet spaghetti or al alphabet pasta, pasta for soups. And the experience is always different in the mouth. Some slip off the fork and they all taste and feel differently in your mouth and your tongue. Now if we extrapolate from that to circumcision, circumcision is known to uh, get rid of fine touch receptors, like uh, they've been likened to a finger. Like a finger can feel the shape of spaghetti, can't it? It can. It's clear that a finger can, fingers can feel the shape of spaghetti. They can. Now a tongue can feel all these shapes and uh, shape. The tongue and lips can feel all these shapes too. But if you, uh, if you circumcise somebody, you've taken away all those fine touch receptors that are, uh, many have likened to the uh, most sensitive touch in a fingertip or an eyelid. So, if I extrapolate, it can be assumed that a person who's been circumcised, uh, a male who's been circumcised, is going to lose a lot of that sense of uh, touch. Just think, you've got all those different senses of touch and shapes in the mouth, just with the tongue and the lips. If you circumcised the tongue and circumcised lips, if you took away an equal amount of uh, sensory tissue from the tongue and the lips, you wouldn't have that uh, sensory experience, that t sense of touch and not just heat, uh, temperature, smoothness, all these senses with the tongue, not just taste of course, but the senses like uh, hotness and coldness, roughness and all those senses including shape. The fact is you can feel with your mouth what shape is something is. If you have a pea in your mouth, you can feel that it's pea-shaped. Your tongue can tell you it's pea-shaped. If it's, uh, you know, something long, a rod-shaped, or a lolly or something, a candy, you can feel that shape too. Or, or, uh, it definitely can feel the shapes. So, if you go, if you circumcise your tongue, you would have a loss of that sense, wouldn't you? So it makes one wonder about how much sense is lost when you circumcise a penis. They say it's up to 75 to 80%, I think, of the most sensitive nervous tissue, the most sensi uh, sensitive nervous tissue uh, removed for life. So it makes one wonder uh, what sexual experience would be like. You wouldn't be able to feel your partner fully, would you? You wouldn't. I mean, just think, when people have oral sex using their tongue and their lips, there's a lot of uh, sensation, not a lot of physical sensation. The tongue can feel things, and the person uh, being, um, what's the word, being worked on, whatever, uh, has a response to the tongue, and vice versa. There's an interplay of the senses between the tongue and whatever organ it is that you're stimulating orally. My screen just went black. Yes, um,
So you've got uh, all these senses just in the tongue. And if you cut them out of the tongue, you would definitely miss them. You would know the difference. If you cut them out of the penis from birth, no little boy is ever going to know what he should have felt, is he? He's not going to. And it's just like not being able to taste all those different shapes of spaghetti. Imagine. Imagine not being able to feel your partner to the full with your penis. That's terrible. Whatever sort of uh, sex you practice, whether it be vaginal or, or anal or just digital, whatever, you're going to have a different sensory experience if all that nervous tissue is cut out. Now, boys should be allowed to keep that nervous tissue. It's their human right to keep it. It's a right under the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, the Security of Person Principles. It's a right under the Convention on the Rights of the Child, isn't it? It's just common sense. We don't do it to little girls. I don't see that boy, a boy should have it uh, done to them. We uh, don't do it. We don't circumcise animals. It's not allowed. But yes, my experience with eating pasta tonight made me think. I, I'm, I was just conscious how even if it's the same pasta, the different shapes all make a difference to the sensation of eating. Now, if we, lose, uh, if we could lose the sensation of all those shapes just by circumcising the tongue and lips, well, uh, just imagine what you lose when you circumcise a penis and take off that most sensitive nervous tissue for life. That's appalling. See you then. Think about it anyway next time you eat some pasta. That's my uh, little discussion. That's my rant for tonight. Daylight saving time. What is it about? It's 1 a.m. I think now, daylight saving time. See you then. Bye.